Hi, Brandon Davis with Davis CPA Group. Today I was going to talk about individual retirement accounts or IRAs. I get a lot of questions about uh, different types of IRAs, what makes sense from the standpoint of what the a Roth versus a traditional. So we're going to jump in and talk about that. So when we talk about IRAs, again, individual retirement accounts or individual retirement arrangements, that's generally what that stands for. Uh, there's two basic types of IRAs. You've got uh, what they call Roth IRAs and you have traditional IRAs. So I'm just going to say, just abbreviate that. The, di the main difference between the two is how they're treated for tax purposes. A Roth IRA is an uh, IRA that you contribute funds to that is made with after-tax dollars, meaning you've paid tax on those earnings. So say, for example, you have a job and you make you know, $50,000 a year and you want to fund an IRA. And so you'll take your money that you've already paid tax on, that $50,000, put it into an IRA, and then you don't get a tax deduction for that. Basically what happens is that money grows tax-free. Um, as And so when you take it out at a later date, you pull out the money you put in plus your earnings and there's no income tax on that based on our current laws. A traditional IRA is different. You get the tax deduction in the year that you make the contribution. And so it's made with pre-tax dollars. So same fact pattern as before, you have $50,000 in wages, you put $5,000 let's say into a traditional IRA you get to deduct that $5,000 on your personal tax return to reduce your taxable income in the year you make the contribution. Now that money grows tax deferred, not tax free. So as the money sits in the IRA account and accumulates earnings, either how it's invested or what have you, when you pull that money out at retirement age, you, you basically had to pick that back up as income. And it would include the earnings at that point too. Whatever you pull out of that traditional IRA in the future, is taxable income at ordinary income rates. I'm not gonna get into the details too much of tax rates and things of that nature because um, I wanna kinda of do a high level discussion on IRAs, but that's where the planning really comes into play to figure out which one makes the most sense for you is figuring out one, what your tax rates are, what you think your tax rates are gonna be at retirement and kinda of what your overall financial goals are. Something else to point out too, there's limitations on when you can contribute to a Roth versus a traditional IRA. So again, a Roth is, is done with pre-tax money and it grows tax-free, okay? So I wanna put that on here so you can make notes of that at home if you need to. Traditional is done uh, with, uh, is I'm sorry, this is post-tax, and this is done with pre-tax dollars. So you get a tax deduction for it when you put the money in and it's taxable when withdrawn. So I withdraw. So that's something to think about too. Uh, something else that I need to point out, there's income limitations. So if your AGI is over certain levels, then you're precluded from being able to even contribute to a Roth IRA. So that's something you got to think about. You have to have earned income to be able to contribute to either one of these. And also, if you're covered by a, uh, another type of plan, say you're an employee somewhere and you participate in a 401k plan or a simple IRA plan that they may offer, then that may preclude you from being able to contribute also. Once you hit certain income thresholds, if you participate in these types of arrangements, you can't then participate in, in additional retirement plans. There are, however, benefits where maybe your spouse could. So for example, say you work and you make uh, $50,000 a year in wages, you participate in a, in a company sponsored plan with your employer, like say for, in this case a 401k plan, you contribute that 401k plan. Well, your wife doesn't have earned income, but based on uh, your, your income situation and such, she could then uh, contribute to what's called a spousal IRA, where she could have her own IRA that she contribute to uh, and, and, and put, put some funds away also. So that's something from a planning perspective uh, that you could look at doing. So those are the main two differences between the two. Now talk through IRAs a little bit more, you know, a couple other things that, that come up oftentimes to say, okay, I'm putting the money into the IRA and it's stuck in there and it's growing and it's stuck in there until you reach retirement age. Because if you pull funds out of an IRA, particularly a traditional IRA, before you turn 59 and a half, that's kind of the magical age that you can start drawing out of your IRA penalty free. If you contribute to an IRA and you remove the funds before you're 59 and a half, you're subject to an additional tax. It's called a penalty, but it's basically an additional tax of 10% of whatever you draw. It's called an early withdrawal, um, early withdrawal penalty. 
like I've said in previous videos, I don't write very well, I don't spell very well. So that's why I try to read to you what I put up here. But anyway, so 59 and a half uh, is, is, is kind of the magical age to be able to draw funds from an IRA uh, penalty free. Now again, in a traditional IRA setting, it's still taxable income to you. The argument, the argument generally is such though, during your working years, while you're putting money into an IRA and getting a tax deduction, you're at higher tax rates. And that when you hit retirement age, you're only going to draw out the minimum you need to live on. Hopefully, a lot of you, the, your, your debts are paid off and, and you're kind of in a situation where you don't have a lot of you know, outstanding cash flow needs. And so you're drawing out that, that money at lower tax rates. Now, uh, there's philosophical discussions on both sides of the board versus, well, maybe a Roth's way to go versus a traditional. That's not for today. I'm just kind of walking through some of the facts that you deal with uh, in an IRA setting. So uh, at 59 and a half is a magical age where you can start drawing those things out penalty free. There's another magical age we've got to discuss too, and that's age 70 and a half. At 70 and a half, so age 70.5, you have to start taking, or you're forced to take distributions from your IRAs. These are called required minimum distributions, RMDs is, is, is what a lot of people in my industry call those. And so once you reach 70 and a half, you have to start taking a percentage of your IRA out every year. Well, you may be asking, well, what's that percentage? Well, the answer is it kind of depends. Depends on a couple of things. The first factor it depends on is we take the value of your IRAs, all of your IRAs, at 1231 of the previous year. And so if, it's, if you turn 70 and a half in 2018, the year that we're in, we would then look at the fair market value of your IRA at 1231, 2017, and then we apply some factors, some actuarial factors that have been established by the IRS, and they get updated from time to time, but we take that factor based on your age times uh, your, your, your fair market value of your accounts, meaning the value of dollars that's in your accounts. So say maybe that's $100,000 is how much the value is at the end of 2017. And that tells you how much you're required to take out each year. As you age, that factor changes such that you're required to take a little bit more every year. So the older, the older you are, the more you're required to take out uh, as a percent of the value of your account. And this is basically, forcing individuals then to, to recognize that as income. Where this kind of gets interesting and where this really comes into play that, that kind of gets missed a lot is another uh, scenario with IRAs and that's inheriting an IRA. So a lot of my clients that inherit IRAs are inheriting, inheriting them from members of their family that are in this RMD status, meaning they're, they're seven and a half, they pass away, and, and now the heirs are looking at inheriting this. Well, this is a, uh, a planning opportunity, and this is where you need to consult somebody and to talk through what the best options are for you. Because if you inherit an IRA, so if it's gonna be, if you inherit it and it's in RMD status, meaning the person that passed away, the decedent was 70 and a half, then you've got some options. You can take 100% of that IRA value at that time of that person's passing, distribute it all out. It would all be taxable income to you because it was taxable income to the, to the decedent and you pay tax on that money. Now, maybe you need the money or, or maybe you have a situation where you don't have a whole, a whole lot of other taxable income and maybe that makes sense. So option one is uh, up on inheritance, you would draw 100%. I'm just gonna abbreviate. So we would draw 100% of the value of the, of the IRA. It's all gonna, it's gonna be taxable. Or option two is, since it was in this RMD status, you're allowed to continue the required minimum distributions, even though you're not seven and a half yet, you may be 45 years old, you inherited this IRA from your dad who was in RMD status. So now you're required to take the RMDs at your tax rates. So you can take 100% of it, penalty free, because again, it's an inherited IRA, so there's no penalty. And so you have 100% taxable income to you or you can continue to take the RMDs, and let's say this thing's worth $100,000. Well, if you do 100%, it's $100,000 of additional income in the year that the uh, uh, decedent or the, your, your, uh, your dad passed away that you had to pick up an income this year. Or you take the RMDs that he was taking. This is probably a smarter move unless there's a need for the funds or you have something you want to do with that cash. If you take the, continue the required minimum distributions, 
then you're only picking up into your tax rate what you require, what, what your dad would have been required to take out. There's actually a third option. The third option is to continue the RMDs, but have them recalculated uh, based on your life expectancy. So you can recalculate and do that based on your life expectancy. And so that brings the RMD down now and, uh, and puts you in a little bit better shape. So there's some options and some tax planning that really goes into play when you're looking at uh, inheriting IRAs and, uh, and, and what that might look like. So you certainly want to consult your tax advisor uh, whenever you're looking at either contributing to an IRA, which IRA is right for you, what can you contribute uh, to based on your income levels, and what happens uh, when someone passes away.